them for me? Okay. Um, okay, we're at the, um, today is March the 4th, and we're at the Children's Coalition Incorporated. And what is your name? Linda Warren. Okay, Miss Warren. Um, when is your birthday? 7-28-54. And uh, what is your current address? 104 First Lane, Green Acres, Florida. All right, and... Um, the name of the people attending are Latrell Lindsay. 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 Okay, and Justin Lindsay. And Boy Lindsay. And Carlton Cartwright. I'll be down the hall with you. Um, okay, let's see. Right. And the person operating the camera is Boy Lindsay. And the person conducting the interview is? Justin Lindsay. Okay, Justin. All right. Okay, and what branch? Yes. What wars and what branch of service did you serve in? The Army. Um, doing sep October the 1st, 1973 to October the 26th, 1976. And what was your rank when you separated? E5, which is a specialist rank. And where did you serve? Um, I started out my uh, military career at um, Fort McClellan's, Alabama. That's where I start, did my basic. And then I transferred from there to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, to do um, take up a little like medical technology. And then I was transferred to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. And that's where I earned my specialty as a medic, a corpsman. And from there, I was um, shipped to Augsburg, Germany, and I spent the remaining of my term in Augsburg, Germany, which was three years and two months. Where were you drafted, or did you enlist? I enlisted. I was not drafted. I, I enlisted. The Army was an opportunity for me, being grown up the eldest of nine children in Belgrade in poverty, the Army was a means to escape and to build a foundation, so I just had to leave. You know, I've never moved out or been out of Belgrade, and I just want a different role for my life. I don't want to, you know, maintain the life that, or be in the lifestyle that I was already living in. I want something different for me, so I went into the military and listed. Where were you living at the time? Belgrade. Bell Lake, Florida. Um, I, I was born in Sumter and migrated when I was six to Bell Glade, so I was there up to the time I enlisted, and I was age 19 at the time. Why did you join? To, um, to escape poverty. Um, I didn't want to end up like my mother. I'm not ashamed of my mother, but I she always used to tell me, uh, she's deceased now, I don't want you at 29 with nine kids. I want something better for you. I want you to have an education. I want you to live different than I live or I'm living. So she didn't have the funds or the means to send me to college. And back then, they didn't have those special grants back then, you know, that they have now or opportunities for people of color, African American, especially a black woman. The army was my only way out at that time. And if I had to do it all over again I wouldn't make the, I wouldn't change. That still would have been one of my best decisions. It is one of my best decisions. Why did you pick the service branch you joined? Well actually I I wasn't planning <laughs> um I didn't really know too much about the armed forces when I joined. It just so happened um, I was venturing out, walking um, one afternoon, and I came across a recruiting office, and he made it sound so good. And, and, and you know, the Army is the way, you know, there's plenty of opportunities. You can go to school. We'll pay for your schooling. Um, you have an opportunity to see the world. So... I just 
bank dying. You know, I just took that opportunity. Do you recall the your first days in service? Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell you about my first days in the service. The actually it wasn't what the picture was made out to be in the beginning. Basic was hard. Basic training at Fort McConnell was so hard. It was devastating for me because they were asking something of me that I never had to do. I never did ironing, believe me. Okay. So when I went in, I didn't know ironing. Um, I had to polish my boots and and being away from home, I was lonely and I was in an environment that I wasn't really used to and didn't know a lot of people. So I felt alone and I really was trying to get out. You know, I did everything that I could in the beginning to escape because I wasn't used to taking orders and getting up certain hours of the day or the or the morning. And I mean, it wasn't really what it was made out to be in the beginning, but I'm glad that I, I didn't let go of it. I'm glad that I tolerated what I needed to tolerate and maintain what I needed to maintain mm -hmm. and just worked it out. What did it feel like? Well, actually, what it felt like was um, I wasn't a rebellious child, but then my mother didn't enforce a whole lot of rules against me. You know, I was able to do literally what I wanted to do. Um, my mother took care of the cleaning, the cooking, and she did. She treated me. I was a poor girl living as a princess. Okay, She did the best she could for me. I had everything. I didn't have the riches. I didn't have new clothes, but I had clothes that she would go and buy from used clothing, like what they would call rummy sale. And the way she starched and ironed those clothes, you could never tell that they were used clothing. So, and I didn't even, I didn't do any cooking. I'm telling you, no ironing, I'm telling you. When I went into the, went into basic and they gave, told me that I had to iron my fatigues. And I'm telling you, you can see all the scars on my body from marks that, you know, burnt marks. Because I really didn't know how to iron at 19. I'm serious. Okay. You could call it whatever. I wasn't a lazy child. It's just that my mother... Um, she wanted to do everything. She just, I don't know, um, she was the type of mother that, um, wanted to be in control. And I, I allowed it to happen. So, it was, it was a different world for me, a different environment. And it was like stepping into a twilight zone. From being a, a, a poor girl in a poor environment to really... The same poor girl in a different environment, but having control. It was a controlled environment, and I wasn't used to a controlled environment. Tell me about your boot camp experiences. Well, I'm going to piggyback on what I said earlier about the boot camp, and that's the basic training experience. Actually, um, I hated it. Oh, I'm telling you. Getting up 4 o'clock in the morning and... The inspections, and you had to have everything to a T. You had to all your 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 eyes dotted. Uh, you had to have your T's crossed. Um, you had to be sharp. Your whole environment. You had to be in line with everything, and the yelling, and I mean, living with a bunch of <laughs> women. Okay, <laughs> I know you know girls from you know it was it it was culturally sensitive. Meaning, um, I didn't really. Uh, in terms of any other race, I was really living with, you know, annoying any other race with black. Because that's where, you know, I hang out in, 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 in an African-American or a people of color neighborhood. But um, there was a lot of things introduced to me in basic that I wasn't familiar with when I started out my career in the military. And definitely when I left, you know, I was more mature because I was really silly. You know how nineteen years old you, you 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 don't have you don't have no view of life. You don't know where you wanna go. You know, I was a person that didn't take anything serious, I giggled all the time and um very playful. But the basic training or the training that I received helped me to be more mature, to think twice about my life, to be serious about my life. And 
to be in control of my life. So, um, I adopted. Do you remember your scrubbers? Oh, let me tell you. That was so long ago. But it was this one drill sergeant. Looked like she was picking on me all the time. Because every time she comes into the barracks, um, I was so lazy. Very lazy, I'm telling you. Um, she will always tell me, oh, you got to have the crease in the mattress. I mean, the, the sheeting, the bedding. Um, you got the, the, the fold, you have to have the blanket folded and under the mattress a certain way. And I don't know, it looked like everything that I did do or tried to do right, it wasn't enough for her. So, but I guess that's how being a drill sergeant is all about. It's um, um, demanding that respect. Demanding that, demanding that control, and it took me a little while to release that control to her because I wasn't used to being yelled at and used to being told what to do and how to do and when to do it. So I never forget. But in the end, I really thanked her. You know, when I say saying in the end, meaning after the nine weeks, time for graduation, and it was because of her. Her pushing, her drilling, and, and being on top of me, you know, that kept me in line. So, I really appreciate it, you know, all that she did. It was ugly in the beginning, but it turned out to be something beautiful in the end. How did you get through it? Oh, I'm going to tell you. See, I cheated a little bit, too. Don't you cheat? I leashed on to, or latched on to, a girl from Birmingham, Alabama. And, you know, everybody idolized somebody. I don't care, you know, being a leader, I'm a Leo. And I'm very arrogant. I was arrogant all my life. And, but anyways, um, I'll never forget this young lady. You know, her name was Vanessa. I'm not going to say the last name. But I sort of like, um, I was her idol, you know. She came to me for, for answers. She came to me for funding because she didn't have monies and I did have a little money so I was able to share my monies with her and she was missing home too she didn't get through the ordeal but in a way she did my ironing for me she did my boots okay <laughs> and I will I will give her you know incentives too you know whatever she did for me I was say here Vanessa go five dollars go so what I did do I sort of like paid people to do things for me so when the drill sergeant came in and said oh Linda you got nice shiny boots today she didn't know that Vanessa shined my boots and ironed my clothes and so so I used the weaknesses of the other young ladies into my platoon to be the strength for me okay so that's how I got through it which wars did you serve in? Um, I actually just missed um, the Vietnam War. Um, I actually, the era that I did serve in, or the war that I did serve in, was the was the late the early seventies, October of seventy three to October seventy six. So I didn't do any fighting. I didn't go into any fields and. I didn't do all that stuff that you hear about in the movies or you see in the movies or, or you hear how horrible the military was. Um, for, for me, it wasn't that horrible. Just basic training. It was horrible. But after basic training, it was just like being in a college dorm. Away from home. Where exactly, where exactly did you go? Um, actually, I ventured out from... Um, um, Fort McCollins, Alabama, where I completed and graduated um, through my training. I was shipped to um, Fort Dix um, in the South Carolina just to get some make, uh, medical technologies, you know, like um, coding skills. Then I uh, was transferred to San Antonio, Texas, where I did my medic, my medical um, schooling for eight and a half weeks and then from there um, I I was stationed or posted in Augsburg, Germany and that's where I spent my remaining military hours or time in Augsburg, Germany. What was your assignment? 
I was a medic, a coroner, like emergency medical care. Um, it's sort of like a, a, a physician assistant in the real world. Well, in the military, you know, we did uh, emergency care. So I assist the doctor when they go out in the, in the field. And I was able to, you know, let them in broken bones. And um, I was introduced to frostbite and a whole lot of different illnesses that I wasn't exposed to, that I had knowledge of how to um, treat in an emergency situation. Tell me about a couple of your memorable experiences. Oh, man. After the, again, after the um, basic training, things changed for me. It wasn't so horrible. It was just like I was in college. Um, I can remember being in San Antonio, Texas. I'm telling you, a romantic state. And the people were so pleasant. But I was so happy. You know, I think God was on my side. Because me going to Augsburg, Germany, that could that was the best post for me, the station for me, because I couldn't ask for any station better than Augsburg. In Augsburg, um, I really didn't live the life of a, a white you know, I didn't do any KP. I didn't do any barrel cleaning. I was um, assigned to a dorm where there were officers. I didn't have to salute. I didn't even wear my uniform. I wore whites all throughout my whole career. I remember going to my first um, Oktoberfest um, in Munich. And I, I did gain friends. Um, I had several friends there, you know, they were all in the medical field. I had infantry. I had no knowledge of infantry. I never socialized or associated with any infantry infantry personnel. So my major in charge was a physician, a surgeon. And he was like still, you know. We came in, we went out, we did just about whatever we wanted to do. But I'm not saying that's the entire military picture because it doesn't happen like that for everybody. I was one of the lucky ones. So I was uh, surrounded by other medics, dental assistants, physicians in all areas of the medical field, nurses and nurses assistants, which is called nurses practitioners. We had a maid to come in and clean the, our dorm. I, I'm serious, our room. We had a kitchenette. Whereas we could bring people in to do our cooking. And I'm going to tell you, the, and I didn't have no KP or nothing like that. So it was, I was blessed. It was very easy for me. And I lived the life of some way, being, again, being away from home, but in a college style atmosphere. Not like in the military. I never used a rifle, even though I was trained well. And I did get a, um, 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 I was awarded a medal for my interest in my skills in handling a rifle. So, but I didn't have to use it. Um, I had a badge. We used to go out and then they had a McDonald's. And <laughs> it was amazing to see in 1973, 74, there was a McDonald's in Augsburg. And I couldn't afford McDonald's at home in Belgrade, but I was able to afford McDonald's in the military. I was able to send my money home and save, help my parents out. So I could have never asked for anything better than the tour, or, you know, the step that I took in joining the military. That was the beginning of my foundation. How did you stay in touch with your family? Writing. Letters. Um, my mother, um, parents didn't have a phone. Um, so it was through um, telegrams, you know, like postcards and letters. I was able to move my mother by being in the military and saving up my money. I was able to help my mother shift from one section in the glaze to a better section in the glaze mm -hmm. like from one poor suppressed environment to really a lively environment and 
What was what was the food you liked? Chicken. I'm telling you. <laughs> Let me tell you. It was so amazing that being in the military that I'm used to when I say chicken, you know, um we I'm used to getting the wing, half of the wing as my portion of meat. But when I went into the military, man, I'm gonna tell you, I was able to eat not just the wing, the breast, <laughs> any part of the chicken, steak. I mean, um the food was delicious. Um, they had prof um, professional people. And I think the military hires the best. Believe me, everybody in the military is skilled in what they do. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's a demand. They have to go through a strenuous program in order to graduate to be the person they need to be. Because it's a profession. Mm -hmm. How did people entertain themselves? Um... Um, they have what you call dollies. Like, um, we used to take the dolly um, and just go to the different shopping locations. It's just like the Wellington Mall. Okay. Or, um, I would say, um, Boca Mall or um, um, Borton Beach Mall. You know, we used to just travel all up and down and... They, they had so much going on. They had walkathons. You can just get up and sign up to go to a walkathon. They always offer you tours. And it was easy for me to just hop on a medical event because I was a medic, even though, you know, I may, they may not have needed my services but just in case. Mm -hmm. You know, I can hop from Munich, I'm sorry, Oxford, to go to Munich, to go to Amsterdam, to go to London, England, at no cost. Okay, so all I had to do was just hop on a medical evac and be back. And the uh, and the people in Germany was so kind. It was a totally different, you know, culture and atmosphere. And, I mean, especially during the time of the beer fest, the Munich, the Oktoberfest. You know, everybody get together and they're dancing and we're eating the bread and the sauces. And I'm telling you, it was just... It, it was just a unique experience for me. What did you do when you leave? Hmm? What did you do when you left? Oh, thank you. What did I do when I left? Actually, I came back to Belgrade. And um, I uh, ended up in a relationship. My children's father. So, um, I left the military. I established a relationship. A male female relationship with the college, um, obtained my degree as a sociologist, and I'm the mother of three daughters. So my life was very three grown daughters. When you were still in service, what were some of the pranks that you or others pull, would pull? Say it again, sorry. When you were still in service, what were some of the pranks that you and others would pull? What was some of the what? I, pranks. The pranks? Oh. I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. We used to do so much weird stuff. Um, A lot of weird stuff. Um, There was this one. Um, It was coming from Oktoberfest. And it was like six of us in a Volkswagen. You, you, you may not know what a Volkswagen is like. It's a little bug. A car. And... We were all like driving, and in Germany they use manure to fertilize the the vegetables. So, what happened? We were all driving and driving and driving, and I knew I couldn't drive. Okay, but I took over the wheel. I told everybody I could drive, and guess what happened? I ran into. The wagon with all the manure, the animal manure, <laughs> okay? And it came falling down on everybody. And, you know, that scent was on everybody for a long period of time. So, I lied. Just to be in the showcase. And I caused, not caused a lot of problems, but I guarantee you they didn't give me the key again. 
<laughs> did you keep a personal diary? Actually, I didn't. Okay. Um, I should have because um, I was one. I was the white chosen to um escort Muhammad Ali when he came to Germany when he had that fight, the Manila fight in Munich. Now that I could today, that probably would have if I would have kept a diary and pictures of that experience, I probably could sell it right now and gain a profit. Okay, I'm serious. But actually, I didn't. The only, um, I would say, um, how would I say, evidence or proof that I was in the military or I could have some documentation was through letters. Mm -hmm. And I lost my duffel bag with all the response that I got back from my parents and other friends and the guy that I came back to. So, I messed up. I didn't keep a diary. Do you recall the day your service ended? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a joyous day. Actually, um, I had on my um, uniform. And, you know, that was the best feeling. I'm telling you. You know, when you put on your uniform, your hat, your signal, and my little medal and... Dressed so neat and boutique, and you're walking in the airport, and that's another good thing about the military. I got to travel, and you know it didn't seem like things was gonna work out in my favor in in basic when I was at basic training. But after basic training, if you can endure basic training, your life is gonna be totally different. People respect you, and they honor you, and. I got to get all kinds of, you know, like incentives for being in the military. I can just hop on planes and I can do a whole lot of things. But anyways, um, getting back to your question, um, I cried. I'm going to tell you why I cried. Because I was leaving people behind. Mm -hmm. Even though I left my family and was going back to my family, I built a relationship. I have a, I, I'm leaving another family. I left another family. People that been with me for three years, you know, had my back. Um, we lived together. We laughed together. We ate together. And it was a group of girls and guys. And the officers treated us like princesses. I'm telling you. They respected us. I never had to salute. I'm serious. I'm, it was just like, again, being in a college dorm. I'm telling you, I had to make, I had to make up no bed like I did in, in basic training. I had to do nothing like that, okay? But I was leaving friends behind. You know, that's a terrible feeling when you build a relationship and you rely on, on the strength of everybody. And, and, and you care and you socialize and you ate together, you dwell together. That was a hurting, we all cried and when I got on the train to go to um, Munich to um, catch a flight to um, New York, okay, Kennedy. And from there, I had to catch a flight to, again, Fort Dix, because that's where I was, was released. And from Fort Dix, I caught the bus to Belgrade. So leaving people behind was horrible, both ends coming into the military and after I built a relationship and my friends I mean it was just like sisters and brothers and we joked and we played cards we played checkers we danced we didn't go clubbing because that was a good thing none of us had a, a desire to go clubbing mm -hmm. even though we had an opportunity to we didn't have no curfew <laughs> we can just go in when we felt like it okay nobody said nothing you know and um I know I was blessed, and I know being in the military was one of the better choices in my life. I, I, I truly believe if I would not have left my home in 1973, just venturing out, just walking, and ended up in front of a recruiting office, if that would have never happened to me, my life wouldn't have been like it is today. Because when I came back, several of my friends were dead. You know, they was going downhill. They had no structure. They have, n they wasn't even trying to build, and I'm talking about women. They were loose. Mm -hmm. And 
I couldn't connect with them because I had elevated from that. Okay, and everybody looked and said, oh my God, you think you all that? No, I'm not all that. I was just, I'm a little different, okay, and I want something different. Mm -hmm. Did you continue any of those relationships? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I keep in touch with Clarissa, Sylvia. Sylvia is a, um, well, Clarissa right now, she is a dentist out of, in um, Sumter, South Carolina. Clarissa, um, she is um, like an engineer, okay, a computer engineer. Janice, um, she um, is a, a physician assistant. So I do keep in touch with a couple of, of, of the young ladies that was with me. Did you join a veterans organization? Actually, I've never joined a veteran organization. I'm going to tell you why. The re I support veterans. I always contribute funding to veterans organizations, but I never participated. My whole life been around trying to raise my three daughters. You know, I was a full-time housewife, full-time mother, even though I'm divorced now. And my daughters are all grown, but I think they nurtured them and to make sure I was there for them and to instill in them what I had instilled in me. Neither one of them went into the military. They wouldn't see of it. But I think they did well. One of my daughters a nurse. Um, my youngest daughter, she is a prosecuting attorney for Palm Beach County. And my middle girl, she's an investigator for food stamp fraud in Tampa. So, you know, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Do you attend reunions? Um, No. No, no. No, because I'm going to tell you why. Being, you know, going from being posted a station in Germany, we had people from all, we had people from all everywhere. Um, I, I didn't have anybody from Bell Glade. They were scattered to California, um, Kentucky, um, Wisconsin. Um, I tried to hook up with Janice in, in um, Columbia, South Carolina. And when I did go, we was gonna do something together. She had another mission to do. She has she's an intelligent agent, like a, a private investigator. Mm -hmm. How did the service affect your life? Oh man. I can easily say that. Okay. I, definitely I know. Um it helped me to establish a foundation. It made a better person of me. It it really matured me. It helped me to understand people because I wasn't used to a diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. I was used to a set group of people. And um it showed me um that I had high potential and it helped me to get through college. Um it helped me to shift from one environment into a more prospering or positive environment. Mm -hmm. It helped me to reach out and help my mother and my other siblings up under me. Um, it, 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 gave, it showed me that, Linda, you know, you don't have to live in poverty. poverty. I'm sorry. You don't have to be a little like your parents. I'm not ashamed of my parents, okay? But you can reach for the stars, okay? You can be whoever you want to be, and that's who I am now, who I wanted to be. And I, my life is content, believe me. I'm happy that I made that decision. Is there anything that you would like to add that we have not covered in this interview? Well, actually, yes, there is something that I would like to add. If there's a person, anybody that's lost, don't know which way to go, confused about their life or the choices of life and trying to build a relationship or a foundation, trying to establish a positive atmosphere themselves, the military is the way to go. I don't advise any young person, anybody just to sit around and hang out. You know, I'm waiting on this, I'm waiting on that. So if you're not sure of your college or what you want to do 
in, in terms of education mm -hmm. or skill building, I'm telling you the military is the choice. It will help you because being in the military, I'm going to tell you, or entering into the military, I didn't have to worry about college tuitions. I got paid while I was going to school, even though I got pregnant, you know, the first year, okay? But yet still, I didn't let that hinder me. I didn't let that stop me. I went to school, and I was able to earn an income. Um, it showed me, it matured me. It placed me on a pedestal, and I was already on a pedestal for my mother, growing up with my mother, but it was a different type of pedestal. Pedestal. I had control of my life. I knew that I didn't want to just be pregnant with nine kids. I wanted something different. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a difference in my children's life. So. Thank you very much, Mrs. Warren, for, your, for sharing your recollection and experiences. Thank you.